Hello YouTube and welcome to a new Let's Build series and this is Let's Build an Incan Plot. So, I did originally plan on doing the terrain as part of the Let's Build series but the audio got messed up so I've just completely finished the base of the terrain. This is what I call phase two. So phase one would have been like sort of just plotting the basic, phase two is making it look good and I was starting with phase three which is sort of painting the terrain. So I'm just going to quickly talk about um, what we're doing and then we'll get into painting it so got these nice high mountains and the Incas lived in the Andes um, so try to represent that we've got a nice ravine that's going to be running off the plot there gonna be a little rope bridge across here you follow this path round through a cave you've got this massive tall cliff here um, and then you can start to see that it opens up a little bit and what I really like is that from over here you can see sort of mountains in the background, but it is pretty much all covered up uh, from obstructing the view of what's going on over there. We're going to have a nice little bridge over here. We're going to have a waterfall coming down for the ravine. And you come here, and we have this circular section. And people who keep seeing this on the server are like, why is this so round? And um, it's the type of farming that the Inca did. And um, the reason they did this is because obviously the climate and the temperatures were quite cold in the mountains and doing this circular um, descending pattern it meant that it was a lot warmer in the center and this center spot would have been about five ten degrees warmer than up here for example so they were able to grow different crops at different levels and you know get quite a lot of farming done and then over here we're going to have the sort of main settlement and I'm thinking of doing maybe not something just like a small village all very compact and quite close together and what's going to be really cool is I saw that in some villages that the Inca took over um, they sort of kept the culture of that um, th of the people that they took over um, so but then they would also use different colours to show where they could go. I'm not really explaining this very well, but it'll make sense in a minute. So, there was sort of like the white level, which is where everybody could go. Then there was like the yellow level, where it was just like high, high people from that culture um, who were sort of like in with the Inca. They could go in those sections. And then you had like a red section, which was just Inca only. Um, so it was like a, a status thing. And then up here, and there's going to be a path going off over in that direction. And then up here we've got this nice winding path. Probably still need to work on this a little bit more. But, you know, it's going to go all the way up this cliff face. All the way up. And up here we're going to have a temple of some kind up here. I'm not sure how it's going to look or anything like that. But I really like, like, you're really up here and you feel, you can see over everything. So it's a great vantage point. Um, you know, you can see that path over there. You can see... the a path over in that direction you've got the village and the farm and everything. you basically just got a great vantage point over everything and being so high up with all these mountains it just it makes sense to have like a temple or something up here it just feels great so that all being said we can now get on to painting the terrain this might take an episode or two so we'll just see how it goes so I'm going to start off with adding grass because that's going to help us a great deal so brush Sphere 2, I'm going to do a large brush at first, so a size 5 brush and mask 1. So now I've done that, I can just sort of click around like this and we can start to paint the terrain now. And this is sort of a basic level of painting and I will be going over um, sort of different techniques in a minute because I feel that, I think I did do it in a video um, a while ago, but I feel like it needs to be revisited. Um, because <clears throat> I've seen quite a few people who still just use a random brush they're not really thinking too much about where they want the terrain to be what what's actually happening with the terrain and stuff so I'm just going to quickly brush the majority of this uh, as grass down these sections leaving obviously the cliffs and the mountains and stuff like that and then we'll be going back on with a smaller brush to sort of redo finer patches of grass 
which is a, a really nice thing to include when you're doing this sort of thing. So you know, up here we can have grass as well. And uh, now I'm going to have to use a smaller brush because we're getting into the smaller details. So sphere two, and we'll go with a size two brush. So it's really, really small now. As you can see, we're just going to cover up those sections like that. Don't worry about too much about doing grass things like this. You know, we can always fix those up later on. So make sure you bring in the grass all around here, all up these sections. We're not going to have too much grass in here because obviously it's a cave, so you know the grass would be thinning out. That might be something that I do by hand though. Um, just sort of phasing that out. I mean, I can do it with World Edit, but I like the control that I get with using doing things by hand. So that's 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 it. That actually makes this plot look a lot better, like <laughs> a lot better. I was thinking this terrain wasn't looking that great. Now I've even just included one different material. It looks a lot nicer now. So now I'm going to be doing the sort of extra details. So this is where the grass. Where it's sort of flatter on these top ridges and these shallower slopes, we can sort of get a bit more grass in and then keep these steeper sections as stone. And this will just like create a nice transition between all the different sort of sections of the mountains. So it'll make a bit more sense on this mountain as well. You can really be able to see sort of the arms of the mountain cutting down into this valley. And we can do maybe a little bit there. That's probably going to be too high, but we can fix that in a minute as well. Uh, same here. Bring it up. And you've got a nice little crevice here, which it will fit into nicely. But I do think um, I will have to revisit sections like that. And we can use that the darker stone to really emphasise that it's in the shadow and really emphasise the type of stone and stuff like that. So up here we're going to have a bit more grass, maybe, I think that, that might be enough. That's all looks okay. Not really much to include here. We've got this bit of the path maybe. And we can actually, I suppose, do a big section of the path here, but it's, that's mostly going to mostly, mostly gonna be done by hand. Uh, just because of how small it is and it'll be a lot more control and a lot easier to do that. Um, you can get a little bit here as well I suppose. Just adds a little bit of extra detail to the uh, shapes and sizes and stuff like that. Um, yeah I think that's it. So let's move on to the stone. Now a lot of people when they're doing the mountains they will do something along the lines of this. So they'll do one one coal on five, one coal on six, and maybe they put moss in there as well, so one coal on one, one coal on two. And then they'll just do this, and they'll go, oh yeah, my mountains are great, that looks fine. And that's hideous. Sorry to say, but that is terrible, so I'm just going to undo all of that. And this is what I mean about trying to paint the terrain, not just randomly going over with a brush. You want to actually f think about what materials you're placing and where you're placing them. So I'm just going to use normal stone and dark stone and just use that as my base coat. Now this doesn't matter too much because it's not much variation going on between these materials and I think just for the purpose of this video I'm going to do this whole section around here, just this section and then I'll do the rest off camera because it's just going to be the same technique going over and over unless you know we get to something that's a little bit different so that looks a bit nicer already next thing we're going to do is brush sphere um, one colon one and one colon six this is the lighter stone we want a small brush now so size one and we'll leave the mask of stone and I'm going now to go over the ridges and that's not worked. Why has that not worked? Double slash. That's still not worked. What's going on? Brush, sphere, one, colon zero, one, colon six, size one. There we go, now it's worked. 
So we're going to get these lighter sections right on these peaks. And if you wanted to, you could still include um, the darker stone in this brush. But I like to have a bit more of a transition. So you can see the darker stones nearer the bottom, the lighter stones nearer the tops. And you've got the sort of normal stone in between. A block here and there isn't going to be too detrimental to what you're trying to achieve. So don't worry about that too much. I'm just going to go up to these peaks. Follow down on sort of the higher ridges. And you can see it just adds a nice little highlight to the terrain. So it just really brings out some of these contours and some of these lines on the mountains. And just cross there. You could do a little bit on here as well. You know, again, that's just a, a small little detail, just thinking about exactly where you want to have these, um, where you are, exactly where you want the terrain to be. So this is just small little techniques, and it's making it look a little better. Still a little bit of work to do. Now I'm going to put some moss stone into these mountains. So we're going to do one colon, zero, because we always want the normal stone in there. One colon, one and one colon two. I'm actually going to start using percentages now because I don't really like the one colon two too much. Um, what we're going to do is say 20% of that, 40% um, of that, so we're on 60, 20% um, of one colon zero and because we had it in earlier we're actually going to put 20% one colon five which is the darker stone so I'm just going to include that as well. Size 3 brush. So just bring it up. And now around all of these sections. That's not that word again. What's going on? Brush, sphere. Spell everything right. There we go. That's where my mistake is. I put an extra comma in when I shouldn't have. Everything else looks fine. That's much better. So now I'm going to place these in where it's closer to the uh, grass and you can see that that's going to start to create a little bit of a transition now between the sort of grass and the cliffs and you're going to do it at the top and the bottom you're not going to really do it in the middle too much and just let it just climb up a little bit climb up slightly try not to get rid of too much of the detail that you've already included so you know we've got these sort of lighter sections on the cliffs and just bring them up and it's a nice little technique and again it just adds a little bit more detail makes it look a little bit more um, interesting makes it feel more natural and just yeah so already from just doing simple little brushes and actually choosing where we want these materials to be we've made quite a bit of difference to what was just some boring normal flat terrain and we're completely not done there's like a million different things that you could do from here on out. Um, I think I'm going to try get a little bit of snow up on this peak, but only this one. I don't want it to be all over because um, the grass obviously would be dying out a little bit more. So that's what I'm also going to do now to make the grass a bit more interesting. I'm going to do sphere two, three colon one, and three colon three. And um, what I'm going to do is also add percentages in again, so we don't want too much of the dirt. We want a lot of this, so we'll do 50% of that, and we want what was 40%? Actually, no, 30%. Sorry. And we also want stones, so we're going to do another 10% of one. And there we go. That that uh, size. Not a big size, maybe size 3 again. And mask 2. And this is just going to go right on the edges. So where you've got these mossy bits of stone, just going to right click. And you can see it's just going to bring a little bit of the uh, stone into the mix of the grass. And you've got this dirt path and the dirt blocks just coming in now as well. And it looks a lot nicer. Just breaks it up a little bit. Makes the uh, terrain sort of blend in and a little bit more and we've got a bit more interest going on like here it was just all completely green now we've got the bits of brown in there you've got the stone that's sort of 
edging its way into the grass and you've got the grass that's slightly building up and I'm just going to redo another brush and I like to re redo brushes over brushes over brushes you can probably do all this in one brush or just two brushes if you want but I like to go into detail and paint over and paint over and paint over until it starts to get in the style that I want it to be so now we're going to do two and we're actually going to do two coal on two and that's the grass with the stone on the bottom and then we're going to do two coal on, no, one coal on two and that's the really mossy stone and just the size and, no sorry, one as well normal stone as well so that's size two brush and this is right on the edges now so I'm just going to, oh, mask two, one and three masking the stone and the dirt there you go I can see now that it's just taking sections away from what we just had and it's just really blending the materials together a l that little bit more and in fact I'm going to put the uh, 3 colon 3 into this brush as well uh, 3 colon 1 sorry into this brush as well and just mix it up in a little bit nicer there we go that works yeah so with using these techniques it's just all about experimenting finding what's right for you what you think looks good and just mix them all together you really want to focus on the blend between the materials you can see down here we've got really mossy because this is right along the edge of this cliff ridge so I really want to focus on getting that looking quite normal and then I'm going to get rid of the this going to go back to that brush we had earlier uh, for the three colon one and then just bring that all along this path a little bit foot a little bit more a little bit further in like that go back to that brush again you can get a bit more mossy stone textures in there and that isn't too bad it's not great I'm not really happy with it too much there's a little bit too much stone on this path but I can fix that up by hand but as a base coat that looks 10 times better than this looks in my opinion and it looks obviously 10 times better than when it was just all one material all stone there's definitely too much stone mixed in down here so I need to fix that right up here in the mountainy regions it's not so bad uh, I just need to fix these up but I'll probably do all this off camera do the rest of the terrain and I'll see you guys in episode 2 where hopefully we might start working on some Inca style buildings and stuff like that. So that's it for this video, I hope you guys have enjoyed this introduction to the new series. If you have, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff and I'll see you guys in the next one.